This week on One Devotion, meet a veteran who has seen it all and from every angle in the Euroleague's first 15 years. Hear what players from the same locker room think about each other's special um, talents. Discover a backcourt duo from the same city who circled the world to play together. And witness how a superstar revived his team with his best single game Euroleague performance yet. If anyone can claim a unique perspective on the first 15 years of this Euroleague century, it should be the player who, from day one until now, has witnessed the greatest amount of drama from the most different angles. Add a player's Euroleague seasons to the number of clubs he has represented and countries he has called home, and no one has a higher total than Nikos Sizis of Broza Baskets Bamberg. I have been uh, blessed. Uh, I, it's true that uh, I played in many countries. That's how the things went in my career, and um, I I had the chance to to see uh, different cultures, uh, different styles of games, uh, players that less experienced or great legendary players. Zizis has now played 14 Euroleague seasons with seven different clubs in five countries and is one of four current players who also saw action in the inaugural 2000-2001 campaign when his debut came with little warning or precedence. I was playing for IAC Athens um, and actually it wasn't, let's say, the most normal debut because it was uh, for a big, very big game for a quarter-final of uh, of Euroleague, I remember Coach Ivkovic came to me and he told me we need a young guy to play some defense and give some energy. Uh, it was game three in Athens. I was so nervous. I, I, I can't forget that day. And uh, guarding Marcus Brown, one of the Euroleague legends, and it was uh, a, quite an experience. I remember I didn't have so good game, but. Uh, it was great that we, we took the win and we went to the semi-finals of, the, of that season. Just 17 years old at the time, Zizis was not immune to a bit of stargazing. The year before, I was in a very small team of Thessaloniki, my hometown, and I was watching all these players on TV, and all of a sudden, I'm with them in the same floor. It was amazing for me to watch all that guys. And, you know, there are many that I can mention from, uh, from many teams, but, you know, it's not somebody specific. Let's say Manu Ginobili, that after making an unbelievable season, I remember that year he was in Virtus Bologna, and many other stars that, uh, that they were playing in Euroleague, and all of a sudden I was 17, I was not even an adult yet, you know, and I was playing with them. Averaging 17 minutes in two playoff games that first season led to Zizis becoming a regular contributor for AEK Athens at age 18 and a starter by 19. He subsequently left his native Greece for two seasons with Benetton Treviso of Italy before landing with powerhouse Seska Moscow and becoming Euroleague champion in 2008. Because uh, Euroleague is such a high-level competition, um, it's not easy to win Euroleague. Uh, we have a lot of great, great players that didn't have the chance to do it. Because, you know, when you get to the Final Four, everything can happen. Um, there are, most of the times, are four great, great teams that um, each of them have their own possibilities to win the trophy. So to have the chance and the luck to win it, it's amazing. After finishing as runner-up in 2009 with Seska, Zizis reached the final four for a third time in 2011 with Montepaschi Siena of Italy, before returning again last season with Fenerbahce Istanbul of Turkey. With Fenerbahce, that was the first time ever, and that was a very nice feeling for, for me and for all the team. And now I'm here in Bamberg with a team that is uh, more young, and that's also another, let's say, challenge because there are many guys in many of my teammates that didn't have the chance to play yet in Euroleague. 
and uh, for sure my experience I hope that I can help them a little bit because uh, this competition is so hard and there are so many high level players. Today, Zizis ranks sixth in games played this century with 245 and is the youngest top 10 player on that list. Now 32 and leading Bamberg in its surprise role as a playoffs challenger, Zizis is ready 15 years after he arrived for whatever his EuroLeague career keeps giving him. First of all, I feel a little bit more old. <laughs> uh, second, for sure, is um, I missed only two Euroleague seasons because my teams weren't playing. I played in Euro Cup. That still it's a high level competition, but for sure Euroleague is the best competition in Europe. Um, I feel very happy about it. The truth is that I've seen everything. I played in a team with bigger or with a less bigger role. I had the chance to be in a team of, uh, that won the Euroleague, that I went with Final Four uh, with three different teams. It's amazing that um, all this journey that I had and I'm looking forward for this next challenge. Cervena Zvezda Telecom Belgrade young captain Luka Mitrovic grew up with basketball in his family. Both his parents were big fans of the sport and his father played at the highest level. They are still his biggest supporters, but Mitrovic also reveals that he may not even be the best player in the family. Both of my parents uh, used to play uh, basketball. My mom played it a little bit in high school and my father uh, was a a little bit more serious, serious in that basketball story than my mom. He was like semi-professional player here in uh, Yugoslavia, and he played some low, uh, like third or fourth league here in, uh, in that time. So the n normal, normal things that I started to play basketball. My father. Uh, watched, of course, as a basketball player, he watched a lot of games on the TVs. He, take, uh, he took me to some like uh, games in my born city to watch it uh, live. Also, uh, I was uh, one year I was on a mountain with him when he was on a training camp with his team. So all that things uh, makes me to start loving basketball and. Uh, make me to ask my parents to go on the first practice. Every time uh, and they, uh, when they free, uh, they came to our games because we're not living in the same city. Uh, so every time they're able to come, they're coming, uh, watching our games, supporting me, uh, gives me some advices, uh, critics and all of that uh, really, really helps me a lot to have like parents who they, uh, who follows you everywhere and gives you support all the time. I got also a younger sister, and she also uh, she also started playing basketball. She's still young, but she's very tall, and she's maybe more uh, more ta talented than me. Local derbies, blowout wins and individual brilliance. Top 16 round 6 had a bit of everything. Panathinaikos won big in Zagreb. Darushafaka held off Servena Zvezda in a close battle. Lokomotiv prevailed in Malaga and Fenerbahce won an Istanbul derby against FS. In Group E, Serevita led an early challenge through Miro Bilan, but Panathinaikos established a big half-time lead with a strong second quarter. 
The Greens cruised the rest of the way as Miroslav Radulica scored 21 points and Nick Kalathis tallied 10 points and 10 assists. Servena Zvezda battled hard in a close game at Darushafaka Dos Istanbul, with neither team holding a lead bigger than six points for the entire 40 minutes. But Darushafaka's defence stayed strong at the death to register its first ever top 16 victory. Unikaha Malaga went ahead behind an inspired Mindaugas Kuzminskas, but Lokomotiv soon found its regular go-to guy in Malcolm Delaney, who allowed his team to break the game open in the third quarter. Delaney scored 21 points to lead Lokomotiv to a valuable road win. And on Friday, a big local derby in Istanbul saw Anadolu FS control much of the game as Dario Saric and Jedi Osman delivered influential performances. But unbeaten group leaders Fenerbahce struck back when it mattered. With Meli Mamutoglu scoring four three-pointers in the last 11 minutes to secure a lead which strong defence protected in the final stages to secure another win. Fenerbahce enjoys a two-game lead at the top of the group with Lokomotiv in pursuit. FS Panathinaikos and Servena Zvezda are one game further behind with Darul Shafaka gaining its first ever win in the top 16. Bamberg overpowered Barcelona in the game of the week. Olympiakos battled back against Himki. Seska brushed aside Jalgiris and Laboral Kucha triumphed in a Spanish derby against Real Madrid. In Group F, FC Barcelona Lassa went ahead in the game of the week behind Justin Dolman, but host Spamberg would not be denied as Darius Miller's offence and Nicolò Melli's all-round game lit the fuse for a crucial victory, which ran Bamberg's home record to 6-1 this season. Group leaders Himki Moscow travelled to Piraeus and didn't take long to establish a double-digit lead with a strong all-round offensive display. But veteran Georgios Printezis helped drag Olympiakos back into contention, finishing with a career-high 30 points and the weekly MVP award as his team claimed a key comeback win to end a three-game losing streak. Travelling to Jalgiris Kaunas, Seska Moscow quickly jumped out to a solid advantage behind star guard combo Milos Teodosic and Nando De Color, and the Russian team never looked back en route to a comfortable win. In the Spanish capital, Real Madrid battled hard as Sergio Rodriguez led all scorers with 18 points, but Fabian Corzer's versatility, along with 14 rebounds from former Madrid player Ioannis Borosis, helped Laboral Cucha hold firm to claim an impressive road victory. Three teams share the lead at the top of Group F with Himki, Seska and Laboral Cucha all on four wins. Olympiakos, Madrid and Bamberg are just one game behind in a group which promises to stay competitive all the way. Teammate that is the worst driver is probably. The worst driver is, uh, I think, Luca. Um, he just got his, uh, he just got his driving license, and the way he's driving is like, it's like dangerous. <laughs> Ruslan Petiev, uh, he's got a new car, so he likes to drive it around fast, and he's probably a pretty bad driver. I would say uh, what I heard, Quanti <laughs> is driving the uh, fastest from of all of them. Uh, Earl, he drives like a girl. He drives so slow and both hands on the wheel. He's always checking. Earl, Earl, he's the worst driver for sure. I would think Kyle because he does everything damaging. I don't think he does anything with finesse. It's all bang, bang, boom, boom, bruising. Uh, Paolo Cittrini, our assistant coach, is the worst. He doesn't doesn't like he doesn't know how to drive and he keep using the brake and after uh, accelerate so it's the worst. Grazie capitano. 
that's probably Toko Shangela. Uh, last year he, he got a, a new big car and like one week after there was a huge hole in it because he drove right into a pole. Easy question. Silvan Landsberg is, is the worst. Not in the team, in Tel Aviv. This is the worst driver. He got Simon in his car. I'm the worst driver in the city. To me, this is Amadidis, not because he is dangerous, but uh, he always goes uh, slow and he is uh, scared of everything. Suarez, for sure, 100%. Nice. He doesn't know how to drive at all. <laughs> he just got his license a couple years ago, so when I'm going to practice with him sometimes, I'm really afraid. <laughs> <laughs> He's late sometimes in practice. He played on two meetings, I think, and uh, on one practices. Every week as it takes the floor in the EuroLeague, Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar receives extra attention from basketball fans many thousands of kilometers away across the Atlantic Ocean. That's because Lokomotiv's backcourt this season features two players whose bond was born in Baltimore, Maryland, the city in the United States that both Malcolm Delaney and Dante Draper call home. The whole city is behind us right now. Everybody, you know, just happy that two guys from the inner city can make it on the highest level over here and play together. And I think they're just excited to see uh, what the bottom of backcourt can do. Putting that backcourt together, however, meant traveling the world until they could be on the same team. Draper has now played in eight countries on two continents. While Delaney, almost five years younger, is on his fourth club and country since turning pro. But it all started for both on the streets of a tough city, where success like theirs is far from guaranteed. Poverty, uh, drugs, crime, you know, everything that goes on in the uh, inner city, you know, in the United States, you know, Baltimore is one of the worst, you know, so. It was tough. <laughs> now when I look back on uh, where I came from, it was really, really tough making it out of there. Every basketball player in Baltimore plays with uh, a chip on their shoulder because it's hard to get out of the city. We grew up watching a lot of guys that were great basketball players who got caught up in the streets or, you know, something stupid that put them away from eventually making it to be the great basketball player that it could be. So, you know, it's, it's tough making it out. Draper was a young teenager when some of his friends were coached by Delaney's father. A few years later, he began hearing that Delaney was an up-and-coming guard himself. Later, when Delaney was still in college and Draper already a pro, they worked out together one summer with another Baltimore friend, Carmelo Anthony. They kept in touch going forward until both were making their names in Europe too. I played against him when I was in Croatia, his first year out, and I kind of sat him down. We talked about like the overseas life, and I liked how his mind was. You know, he was focused on getting better and getting to the highest level, and uh, I think he achieved it. He went through all the way from Australia to Madrid, so he kind of motivated me to be a EuroLeague player. I never, I didn't know what EuroLeague was, and when I finally talked to him, he kind of broke it down to me and helped me out with that. So he motivated me to get to a higher level. 
So when the chance came to play together for the first time this season, neither was about to let such a golden opportunity pass them by. Once this option came up, you know, I thought it would be a great opportunity to play against Malcolm. He in the prime of his career, and I'd like to see him, you know, continue to grow. So I just wanted to come here and just be behind him and just, and just watch the process because I see where he's headed, you know, and I, I want to be a part of it. He called me, and when he called me, I just had a feeling that he was calling me about coming here. And it was just something that automatically clicked. He wanted to play with me, and I wanted to play with him. It could not have worked out any better for Lokomotiv, which had the EuroLeague's third best overall record at the end of January. Delaney is currently the second best scorer and third ranked player overall in the competition, while Draper has posted five personal bests for his 89 game EuroLeague career already this season. Now, when this Baltimore backcourt gets its game on, it's time to pay attention on two sides of the world. Malcolm is the man, so I'm just trying to pick up off of him, you know, see where he goes, and I can just help him throughout the process. It's big for the city, you know, a lot of uh, the old versus the new. Everybody from back home excited, you know, they know what, what it can be. I've been used to playing point guard all the time, and I never really had a point guard with me that could play uh, the position as well as Draper. So he takes a little bit off my shoulders, and um, now he's helping me be a little bit more versatile. I think us playing together, you know, coming from the same city, we have the same style as far as playing with our heart. off a three-game losing streak and hosting the group leaders, Olympiakos Piraeus needed inspiration on Friday night and got more than enough from a familiar source, Georgios Printesis, the MVP for top 16, round six. Veteran forward and two-time champion stepped up with the biggest offensive performance of his 187-game EuroLeague career to help the Reds right their ship with an 89-77 victory over dangerous Himki Moscow region. To his usual array of two-point shots, of which he hit 9 of 13, Printesis added 3-4-5 accuracy from the three-point arc and made his three free-throw attempts to shatter his previous scoring best by drilling 30 points. His three triples matched his second-best total in EuroLeague play, as did his nine rebounds. And with an assist and six fouls drawn, Printesis amassed a 37 performance index rating, best among EuroLeague players this week, and another personal high in his 10th full EuroLeague season. Number five, Istanbul, Turkey. Thomas Ertel makes a good steal. Fast break, Jenny Osman with the slam. Full speed for Anadolu Efes. Started by Thomas Ertel with a great steal. Evades the defense, makes the pass. Osman goes up. Number four, Piraeus, Greece. Key stage in Olympiakos' comeback win. Marko Todorovic is denied by DJ Strawberry, giving his team momentum. What a block. Number three, Bamberg, Germany. Barcelona on offense. Paul Ribas looking for options, sends it to Shane Lawal. A picture perfect alley -oop from Barcelona. Paul Ribas connecting with Shane Lawal. Number two, Madrid, Spain. Sergio Rodriguez behind the back pass. Sergio Yu, Gustavo Ayon. One, two, three punch from Real Madrid, started by Rodriguez. Then Yule and then Ion. A brutal finish from Gustavo Ion. Number one play, Kaunas Lithuania. Olivier Handler makes a steal. He's going all the way. No, he's not. Corey Higgins times his leap to perfection. An electrifying block. The play of the week from Corey Higgins. Top 16 races to its midpoint in round seven with a slate of super showdowns highlighted by two teams bent on furthering their playoff ambitions in the game of the week and by a high-powered face-off between perennial title contenders. 
In Group E, one of the competition's best home teams takes on one of its strongest road warriors as Serevina Zvedsta and the versatile Terence Kinsey welcome Serevita Zagreb and inside force Miro Bilan for the first EuroLeague meeting ever between the teams. Another pair of playoff hopefuls go to battle in Athens, where sharpshooting James Feldine hopes to fire Panathinaikos to victory over visiting Anadolu FS Istanbul and Yangon Dario Saric in what is the 13th meeting between the teams in the last decade. Also in Group E, Fenerbahce defends its perfect home record against Tunicaja, while Lokomotiv and visiting Darul Shafaka play each other for the first time. Group F provides the Game of the Week stage for a brand new matchup at this level, as Laboral Kucha and floor general Mike James go in search of a vital victory against visiting Broza Baskets Bamberg and the always dependable Nicolò Melli. And fireworks are guaranteed as two of this century's most successful teams meet in Moscow, where Olympiakos and the experienced Vangelis Mansaris will look to repeat the result of their unforgettable 2012 championship game against the host Seska Moscow and former Olympiakos star Karl Heinz. Group F also sees Himki play host to Real Madrid, while Barcelona seeks revenge against visiting Jalgiris. We'll see you next week for more EuroLeague action.